Hello and welcome to another video by The Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, we will be going over how to install Echo Speaks version 3 for Samsung SmartThings using the SmartThings IDE and the new SmartThings app. At the end of the video, I will be listing a few of my favorite automations that I'm currently using with Echo Speaks to hopefully help you kickstart some of your own automation projects. For those not familiar with what Echo Speaks is, it provides the ability to interact with individual Amazon assistants through SmartThings and its many smart apps and integrations such as WebCore, Sharp Tools, and If This Then That. This is a great tool that really brings some great additions to your home automation. You can install this smart app via the SmartThings Community Installer if you have that set up already. But for me, I personally like to use the IDE. You also need to have GitHub integration set up within your IDE console. I will include a link in the description below for how to set up GitHub integration along with any other relevant information for this video. Before jumping in, I would like to mention that you will be required to log into your Amazon account on a third-party virtual appliance that you deploy. I'm not able to speak to whether or not you should do this or shouldn't. This is up to you to decide. I suggest doing some research into what everything does, which I will include links for in the description. To get started, you'll need to be logged into your SmartThings IDE and navigate to My Smart Apps. Click on Settings at the top right hand corner and add in the GitHub information for the repository. This can also be found in the description below. Once done, click on Save. Next, click on Update from Repo and select Echo Speaks from the dropdown. In the new window that opens up, select the three smart apps in the right hand column. Click on the Publish checkbox at the bottom and then click on Execute Update. This will pull down the smart app code and automatically install it within your IDE. Navigate to the new Echo Speaks smart app and click on it. Make sure you are picking the main smart app itself and not the Actions or Zones smart app. Inside the Smart App, click on App Settings and then scroll to the bottom of the next screen. From here, expand on the OAuth section and click on Enable OAuth in Smart App. Once done, click on Update. Next, navigate to My Device Handlers, which can be found at the top of the IDE next to My Smart Apps. From here, click on Update from Repo and select Echo Speaks. Under the column labeled New, select the app echo-speaks-device.groovy. Select the Publish box at the bottom and click on Execute Update. And with that, we have successfully installed the Echo Speaks Smart App and Device Handler. Next, let's go to our mobile device so that we can set it up. For this video, we'll be using the new SmartThings app, as the Classic app will be going away at some point. You can use the same steps in the Classic app if you prefer, just know that the locations of things may just be a little different. Inside the app, click on the hamburger menu on the left hand side and click on Smart Apps. Next, click on the plus sign on the right hand corner and scroll down to the My Smart Apps section. From here, locate the Echo Speak Smart App and click on it. Make sure you do not select the Actions or Zones Smart Apps. They both clearly state not to install them from here. Once inside the app, click on Done on the bottom right hand corner. This will bring you to the Installed Smart Apps page. From here, click on the Echo Speaks app. Next, set your Amazon domain and locale based on where your Amazon account is. Once ready, click on Begin Server Setup, which will open a browser window. From here, copy the code in the gray box as we will need it shortly. Then click on the purple box under it. This will take us to another site. If you do not already have an account, you will need to make one by scrolling to the top and creating it. Once created, you can log in. Once logged in, you will be able to create a new virtual app. Under App Name, you will paste in the text we copied moments ago. After it's pasted in, you will need to put a single space at the end of the name and then delete it. This allows for the text field to be recognized as being populated correctly. You must make sure to remove the space at the end, otherwise you will not deploy the virtual app correctly. Now scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and click on Deploy App. A gray window will appear under that, which will have some text scrolling by as the app is deployed. This can take a few minutes. Once done, you will see a green checkbox. Click on View. You will see a new window where you will click on Go to Login Page to log into your Amazon account. In the new window, log into your Amazon account that has your Amazon assistance assigned to it. Again, you need to decide if you are comfortable logging into your Amazon account or not. I suggest you do your own research before logging in. 
Once logged in, you will see a past authentication message on the virtual app page. With that, you can close the browser window and navigate back to the Echo Speak Smart App in the SmartThings app. With the Echo Speaks Smart App open, click on Done to save it again. You will then need to wait a few minutes while the Smart App communicates with the virtual app we recently deployed and pull our assistant information from Amazon. After waiting a few minutes, you can go ahead and reopen the Smart App. From here, you will be able to see all the devices Echo Speaks has discovered and created virtual devices for. You can see other devices that we detected that weren't added, and you can also change your settings for how and what devices are added. You can turn off auto creation of devices as well as enable tablets and other devices to be added if you want. If you have specific devices you don't want added, you can set them within this menu as well. Back at the main menu, you can set up both zones and actions, which I will not be covering in this video. Under that, you can check the status of your connection to the virtual application and Amazon. Next is the notification section. Here you can enable both push and SMS notifications for different events, such as if a device fails to respond to polling or if updates are available for the smart app. Under notifications is device testing. This is where you can test to make sure speech to an individual device works correctly. Let's check it out. Select the device you want to test. You can change the volume settings if you want or leave them at their default. You can then also change the test speech that is set on your device. Once ready, click on the toggle to perform the speech test. And in a few moments, you should hear your device say whatever is in the speech field. This is a speech test for your Echo Speaks device. Under that is a link to documentation for Echo Speaks, as well as some additional settings that can be changed for the smart app. Let's now check out what an Echo virtual device looks like in the new app. Within the new app, there really isn't a lot you can do with it at the moment. Samson says they are working on a way to expose more tiles within the new app and will be coming before the full migration off of the Classic app occurs. Let's take a quick peek at the Classic app to see what all the different options that there are. As you can see, there are a lot more options under the Virtual Echo device itself on the Classic app. You can control the volume, trigger different actions, and even change a few settings that you don't have the option to do in the new app. With that said, you still have full access to the Echo Speaks virtual device and automations. So this means you're still able to directly control the device and use the many different device states right inside WebCore for pistons, for example. I've personally never really had a need to directly trigger the weather or give me the news from the SmartThings app, so to me this isn't that big of a deal, but it was something I wanted to make sure to point out. And with that, we were able to successfully install Echo Speaks version 3 on our Samsung SmartThings hub and set it up to include Amazon devices as virtual devices within SmartThings. We can now go and set up different automation tasks right within SmartThings or WebCore or any other smart app that supports it. A few automations I really like using Echo Speaks with are being verbally notified when the washer or dryer are done, being greeted when I come home and open the door, being verbally notified if windows or doors are left open when I'm leaving, and being notified if severe weather is expected. If you'd like for me to go over how to set up any of these automations, let me know in the comments below and if there's enough interest I'll work on putting together a tutorial on how to set them up. And if you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to be one of the first to know when I release new automation videos just like this one. Thank you for watching.